We are back in Second Life. We are going to animate this cute little toon cat that I found on Sketchfab. Ever since I did my spider video, I have been obsessed with Animesh. It is so much fun and it is so easy with Bento Buddy that I had to show you. So basically, we're going to go to Sketchfab and I will provide the link and we're going to download the 3D model, which is an FBX file, it does come with a texture file too, so we can texture the cat. We're just going to get to the point where we can bring this in world like this. It was so easy. The animations are already there. It's, it's really fast and easy. Um, and we are going to do that. So here we are in Blender. Uh, we're going to import the FBX file that we downloaded. source. There's the FBX file. We're going to bring it in. Oh, she's a big boy. Or she's a big girl, I should say. <laughs> That's all right, though, because guess what? Bento Buddy has the ability to help you scale down very easily. All you got to do is go to your rig tools and add, or rig creation, rather, and add a safe rig. All this does is give you a little skeleton so you can kind of figure out Hey, how big should this be? It's going to grab the armature, hit scale, and bring it down. Maybe maybe knee high, a little bit lower. And let's delete this rig because that was only literally for reference purposes. All right, and the next step is we're going to go to the template creator right here under template creator editor in the visual snap mapper and make sure we have selected the armature here all we have to do is select action Boink. but we're gonna figure out which bones can be used and we're gonna go ahead and do that and it's it's really so much easier than i previously understood it to be we have eye bones we have ears, we have feeties, or paws, I guess, tail, all right? And at, at this time, I think we should bring these forward so that we can see, we'll bring the armature forward so we can see what, you know, everything that's going on. And we're gonna start by uh, just mapping some bones here. Um, I guess we'll start, I think the easiest place to start would be the pelvis. So there's a torso on, Tune cat here, and there's a pelvis on our bento skeleton. Uh, you just select the pelvis on there, select the uh, torso here, and map these bones. Just as simple as that. Then we're going to select the spine here, and we'll use the uh, bento buddies and torso for that one. And we'll map those bones. Look at that. So fast, so easy. We got a spine two bone here and let's see what's left oh look a chest bone so we got a spine two and chest let's map those then we have a head and here's the head on this one so let's map these bones we've got a neck here right below the head i probably should have done that one first but that's all right doesn't matter we've got the neck there let's map these bones all right, so we've got those mapped, and that's, let's look at what this fill tool does, okay? We're going to start with the, the left leg here, and you can see all of the bones and what they're called over here in the upper left-hand corner, plus you can see it in your object prop, in your um, bone properties panel. This is foot FR. We don't want to use the IK bone, and we'll just count back on how, how many are in this chain here. That's the root, so we're not going to use that. We got one, two, three. So that's leg upper, leg lower, and the foot. Now when we do this fill, we're going to want to make sure that we choose the end bones. One, hip, leg upper, knee right. That makes sense to me. So one, two, three. That will be the ankle. And then you got one, two, three. So we're going to just simply, oh, and we also have to set the chain limit. 
to three and we'll click the fill button. Look at that. Just automatically fills everything in and you notice that the, the IK bones just snap back. And I'll move them out the way just so I can see. I'm gonna move over here to the right side. Um, the left side rather. And we're basically we know that the, the chain is three and we're gonna use the foot and the ankle again and we're just gonna hit fill. Now we can use the same exact method methodology to do the tail. Can't see the tail, so what do we do? I don't know what to do. Oh, it's very simple. Look, show all bones. They're still under the visual snap mapper. You show all bones. Now we can see everything. Now we have everything shown. We got a tail here. Uh, makes sense that we would probably use another tail. So we have a tail here. We've got uh, M tail one. What's that? That's the tail base. We'll do M tail one. You got a tail here. Tail one, two, three, four, five. So you got a chain limit of five. One, two, three, four, five. Plenty of length there. You do want to choose the end bone when you're mapping, when you're using the fill command. So we take those last two end bones and fill. Voila! We can move on to hind legs. Move these IK bones out of the way. I just realized I made a mistake. <laughs> Make sure you hit the chain limit at five when you do fill. So select the two end bones, that one and this one, and click fill. Now they're all there. It's pretty easy to tell if you made a mistake because all the bones that are mapped turn blue. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so we'll look back here. We've got the foot back right. One, two, three, four right thigh three four and it looks like we can use these over here so we've got the hind limbs that'll work for this chain so one two three four one two three four make sure that one's selected you can see that it is it's highlighted in yellow okay remember to set the chain limit to four and fill now you see that they're all filled. This is just the IK bone. You can move it and see underneath. All right, let's move this one out of the way. We'll do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four. Make sure you select the end. One, two, three, four. Chain limited as at four, fill. And those bones are now mapped. All right, we're gonna do the mouth next. Um, and we're just gonna have to find the mouth on our skeleton here, which shouldn't be too hard. Probably there's chin, chin. Uh, we'll just use this chin bone here. So here we have those and we did select. So we just map these bones. Let's see what we got next. We got some ears. Here's the right ear. We can map those. Got another one over here. That's ear two. We'll do the same one. Ear one. Map these. We got eyeballs. Let's make sure we file, save the file, reset the stage, which basically just detaches the tool. So we'll grab the rig, come up here, reset stage, boom, everything is back to normal. So simple. Um, the next thing we're going to do, um, this cat has a rest pose. Uh, you can tell this by going into edit mode and this is how the cat it's rest poses. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use Bento Buddy to make sure that we have the right frames um, for our animation. So since the Toon Cat has a rest pose, um, that should definitely be used as the first animation frame. So Bento Buddy can fix this for us too. You just go to the animation section here, go to reference pose features and create a reference pose. which is right here, reference pose features, create a reference pose. All right, so now we're in our rest pose, we're out of frame one. And Bento Buddy then knows already uh, when we go to retarget this animation that it can skip the first frame because it's a marked basically as a reference pose. So the first frame has a reference pose and the animation will get begin at frame two. So um, it's really as simple as that. Go up to mesh export we don't have to worry about none of this we have x we have mapped mesh so we'll export mapped mesh call it whatever you will just make sure it's in a file somewhere now we're going to retarget the animation so that we can get it and prepare it for export all right so we're going to go to the tune cat rig we're going to go under character tools then we're going to um go under retarget animation and this, this cat is not a, a, a human, it's an animal, and it has a custom rib, so we need to glue it and hit action. And that gives us a Second Life compatible rig that actually has meow, 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 a walk animation, which is amazing. Now we're basically prepping this thing for export. We're gonna go to the uh, animation panel on Bento Buddy. We're going to note that the end frame was already entered and the start frame is at two, right here. Loop, start, loop, end. So we're gonna want to set the base priority to three, which mine is already at three. You can name the animation if you wish. And we're going to make sure that loop animation is selected and we're gonna export animation. I already have mine here, which you can just export anim, all right? The next thing we're going to do is go into Second Life and bring everything in. All right, so we're going to go Build, Upload, Mesh Model. I'm going to grab our Toon Cat. We're going to take the lowest down to low. All right, bringing in our Kitty Cat. And we'll go take the LOD down to zero. The physics we're going to set at lowest. Make sure that the rigging has includes skin weights and joint positions. Let's calculate that. Should be 11. It is. Let's upload it. We'll first drop um, a box down. Here we are. We're going to right click and select the box that we made. We're going to um, link the two. Make sure this is animated mesh. And we are going to edit link. Go to the box. Make the box semi-transparent, at least for now. Um, then we can go back out of that and grab the whole entire thing. And in the contents, we're going to drag over our animation and the script. And there you have it. You can, of course, make this 100% transparent now that you can see that it's working. And we have brought in our kitty cat. It was so simple, so easily done. Uh, I'll put some information in the comments section. Um, I can't wait to do the next one. I hope you all enjoyed this video and have a nice day.